So let me start with this slide, which will be a little bit of a review from what we talked about this morning. Put it all up here. Because you already asked the question. Remember I told you I would give you the answer this afternoon? Well, here it is, but I sort of have answered this already this morning. Um, what's unique about being a steward leader with regard to generally stewardship studies or leadership studies? Um, you know, if you look back over the history of leadership studies, there have been a number of ways in which people have tried to articulate what it means to be a great leader. One of them was the great man theory back in the 1940s and 50s, where um, it really, if you're a, it came out of the personal greatness of who you were. And so great leaders are just great leaders because they were just great people and they had great personalities. And so when they got into leadership, they brought into the leadership this idea of a great personality with them. Or the charismatic leader, that really, the reason the leaders are successful is because they're just charismatic people. And you take a charismatic people person and you put him in a position of leadership and he's a charismatic leader. Well, there's some problems about that, isn't there? How, how do you take people and help them become great man leaders, great woman leaders, if they're not? How do you take someone and help them become a charismatic leader if they're not charismatic? So there were challenges with the way of looking at it. There were, um, and, and I guess I should coin this in this larger phrase. If you heard the phrase, are leaders born or are they made? Right, that's one of those questions out there. Is a leader just born a leader and no matter what happens, that's just who they are, it's their DNA, and they're just gonna be a leader regardless of where you put them? Or can you take anybody and with education and training and skills, they will become a great leader. Are they born or are they made? Behavioral or genetic? That's been a question all the way, kind of all the way along. Um, so the, the people who say that they're born that way, they're just born that way, have this idea of a great man or charismatic leader. Uh, it just it comes out of who you are. <clears throat> the made that way are said that it's learned skills and techniques. And these are things like a transactional leader um, a transactional leader is one that, that learns the fact that people will follow you if they get something out of it. So you set up a series of transactions. If you do X, then you get Y. If you make your goals, then you'll get a raise. If you um, come in line with this policy, then you won't get fired. It can be positive or it can be negative. And so leaders set up all these different transactions it's also can be called the leader member exchange so that they get people to follow them because they're always getting something for following. And if that's the case, then anybody can do that. Anybody can learn that activity. And a number of other leadership studies had to do with this idea of learning skills and techniques. That's why I talked about uh, so much of leadership theory has to do with the fact that leadership is really just a set of doing the right things, right techniques. And we just have to learn how to go out and do them. Uh, born or made. And then we talked about servant leader, and again, this was this idea of, um, you know, uh, well, I'll talk about the first one here in a minute. Um, well, actually, this is, a good, this is a good takeoff for why I think there's a difference between the steward leader and these other two. And it really has to do with, first, with, with two things. Um, there's a term that I try not to use, and I hopefully, if you listen to the tape of this morning, uh, I never used it, and I have to be careful. Of it. And that's the term steward leadership. Now, why wouldn't I use the term steward, oh, leadership? I just, the voice of God just came back. How is, is that okay? Now you can really hear me. Now I've got to step back just a little bit. There we are. Um, and here's, here's the challenge. When I say the word leadership, I believe the first thing we think about is, what do I do? Right? Leadership is about doing something. When I use the term leader, what do we think of? Think of the person. Person is a leader. Leadership is what they do. It's exactly the same thing with steward. Um, we can talk, when I, as soon as I use the word stewardship, what do you think of? What's the first thing that comes to mind when you hear stewardship? Money, giving, right? Some things along those lines. Because stewardship all talks about what I do. And I believe that the big problem we have in the church today is because all we talk about is stewardship. Instead, we should be talking about what does it mean to be a faithful steward. 
Because if I talk about being a steward now, it's talking about me. Talk about what God is doing in my life. If I just talk about stewardship, it's okay, what are the five things I need to do to practice stewardship? So many times when you see a stewardship program in a church, it has to do with helping people figure out how to be better at giving away their money. So what I do. I think we ought to have, I think we ought to throw out every stewardship program out there and replace it with discipleship programs that help people understand what it means to be a totally surrendered steward in the kingdom of God. It would make a big difference, wouldn't it? Because once, once you're a fully surrendered steward, the question about giving becomes a pretty easy issue to talk about. It's all God's money. So what, what would he have me do with it? If all we do is talk about stewardship, then it's, okay, what's the techniques? What do I need to do? And we're back to this doing. You see the difference? Same thing with leadership and leader. Um, so I'm hoping that when we talk here, you hear us talk about being a faithful steward, and you hear us talk about being a steward leader, and not talk too much about steward leadership. Because I'm, I'm less concerned about what it looks like and how it plays out than I am about what God is doing in our lives to transform us into being faithful stewards. I say that in part because there's like 30, 35 people in this room and how you lead as a steward leader in each of your given contexts, it can be look very different, can't it? I think, I think you all have um, things happening in your ministries, in your context, the challenges that you have, your background, your preparation, that you're gonna take this theology and you're gonna apply it in your context in a way that's very unique to you. And that's exactly the way it should be. So it's less about your leadership that you leave here with 10 things to do to, to, for your leadership than it is about who you are and who you're becoming. And I hope that that comes across. This, the, um, the second biggest distinction, and I believe this so strongly, is um, most leadership theories don't take sin seriously. Okay? They don't take sin seriously. And this is what I mean. Um, if you tell me that to become a great Christian leader, these are the ten things that I need to do, it leaves my, my brokenness and my struggles and my sinfulness separated from the things I need to do to be a good leader. I don't have to deal with my stuff, right? I can, I can just keep on living the way that I'm living. If I'm, if I'm struggling in sin, if I'm struggling in brokenness, it doesn't address any of that. I, I still struggle with all of that. But on top of that, then, I just do these ten things. And in all my brokenness and sinfulness, I'll be a great leader. Do you believe that? Think that'll happen? How? We've got to deal with our stuff. And so I find a lot of these leadership theories don't make us deal with our sinfulness and brokenness. In a sense, I, my professor that I, when I did my doctoral work, I had this wonderful Scottish professor. And one of my favorite phrases that he said is that, you know, things like this, it throws you back upon yourself. Throws you back upon yourself. And I think that's what these leadership theories do. They just throw us back on ourselves and say, you deal with all the stuff. Just add these techniques to it. And so broken and sinful people try to do things that successful leaders do, hoping that somehow they'll be a successful leader. And it's just not working. <clears throat> In 1950s, uh, McGregor Burns came out with one of the first major seminal books on leadership theory. Before that, you couldn't take a class really much on leadership in colleges or universities. You go back in the 30s, the 20s, people weren't talking about leadership. Uh, I think most of the fact that most people thought that the great man charismatic thing was, was probably right. Great leaders are great leaders because they're just great leaders and, that, and there's nothing you can, you can't teach it. But McGregor Burns came out and said that actually you probably can teach it. He began to kind of look at some of these other ways with learned skills and techniques. Now think about this for a minute. That happened in about the 1950s. And from 1950, 1960, 1970, the whole field of leadership studies began to just take off. And all of a sudden, books and psychology research and business schools started teaching leadership. And in the 70s and 80s, people started writing books left and right. And there were, for the first time, master's level courses in leadership. And then PhDs in leadership. And then the business schools went crazy and Harvard and everybody else began 
emphasizing this. And then the MBA programs kind of came behind them. And by the time you got to the 90s, it was just this frenetic sense of it was all about leadership. And now you can go online and how many books out there are on leadership? Right? Thousands of books on leadership. You, you can't, I, I would challenge you to be able to find any university in the United States that did not have at least a course, if not a certificate or degree program in leadership. Right? It's, it's everywhere. And so today, 2017, we stand at the end of about 30 years, 40 years of this growing intensity. We have studied leadership from every way you can imagine. We have written about it. We have programs about it. We have, we have just fixated on leadership. And let me ask you, do we now have a world just brimming with incredible leaders? I don't think we do, do we? I don't see them. We have a struggle in the U.S. finding great leaders to step into roles in leading businesses and nonprofits out there. In fact, some people say that we have less high value, high integrity, highly effective leaders today than we did 100 years ago. What happened? How can we be putting all this time, effort, and energy into studying this subject and not have just this massive wave of incredible trained, ready leaders? Well, I think the big question I have is, um, are, we, are we focusing on the wrong thing? If we're focusing on traits and not changing people to become great people first so they may become great leaders, maybe that's the problem. We have a lot of people that know how to be leaders. They just can't do it, can't do it consistently. They can't get beyond themselves because we've thrown them back on themselves to go out now and do it. Make sense? Okay, that's my theory. You can, you can uh, debunk it all you want, but that's, that's my theory. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so a little bit about the uniqueness of the steward leader. Oh, good. Let's stop right here then. Um, that's really, oh, and so here's my, here's my phrase to answer this question. Are great leaders born or are they made? Um, my answer to this question is this. I believe great leaders are neither born to be leaders or made great leaders. I believe great leaders are set free to be great leaders. So, for what that's worth, hopefully from everything I said this morning, that makes good sense. But I don't think it's about being born, I don't think it's about being made, I think it's be about being set free to be a great leader. So, that's my rim shot.